Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us, I get to show you guys a couple of amazing little custom Lego built vehicles. Here we have the Dino Park Ford Explorer and the Dino Park Jeep designed by my brother Charlie. Clearly, of course, they are inspired from the 1993 Jurassic Park massive blowout blockbuster hit of a movie. And I know I throw the word iconic around maybe somewhat loosely on this channel from time to time, but this film truly does have some very iconic moments. The effects looked so good back then, they honestly still hold up even today. And when this movie first was released, it was the highest grossing movie of all time. Before I jump into the details of these two vehicles, first I do wanna say that if you wanted to build the Ford Explorer and the Jeep, you can get the instructions at our web store www.brickvault.toys included with each purchase is a pdf step-by-step -step building guide as well as a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the pieces you'll need to make this model happen i also spent quite a lot of time messing around with the graphics if you wanted to print these onto sticker paper a pdf is also included for that as well and if you look closely there you can also see mesozoic park is included as an alternative that was Ramon's request. He says it's more technically accurate, but I don't think I know nearly as much about dinosaurs as he does. Let's get into the details of these fun little models. There's something so incredibly fun and recognizable about both the Jeep and the Ford Explorer. Originally, this is the 92 Jeep Wrangler and the 93, 1993 Ford Explorer. And after this movie came out, people from all over the world started decorating their cars to look like the ones from the movie. Now, of the two, I couldn't possibly tell you which one of them is more popular, but the Ford Explorer by far has the much more striking and vibrant color combination, so I think we're going to start with this one. Knocking out some logistics, it is six and a quarter inches long or 16 centimeters, three inches high, eight centimeters, and two and a half inches wide, roughly six centimeters. But in Lego terms, the scale for this model is, I would say, seven stud wide when you actually look at the bulk of the body, and it's just got a little bit of extra width there with the wheel wells and the uh, side mirrors. Ultimately, this odd number of studs works very well left to right. You'll notice from the doors to the roof, they are just offset by a half stud on some jumper pieces, and that allows the vehicle to get a little bit more narrow as it goes towards the top, which is accurate, but also still remaining wide enough to have minifigures fit on the inside. In total, you can fit four in the seats, and if you really want, you can have a single fig sitting in the back looking out. With the windows closed, you'll see that all these characters look pretty cramped. Technically, the two front seat figs are never studded in, but there's uh, just enough space for them to fit, so they don't actually go anywhere. And though the two figs in the back are perfectly stable where they are right now, if you wanna have them studded in, you can take the windows out of the sides. Or in general, if you just wanna have the windows rolled down, you can do that. And then the two characters in the back actually stud into those seats. It's pretty fun to have the entire cab full of figs. And I also like that there's enough space for minifigure headpieces like Grant's hat if he feels like wearing a hat inside the car, or just oddly shaped or large hair pieces also have enough space to actually fit inside a vehicle without needing to modify the space. Now while we're still on the inside, before I forget, I want to show you guys a couple of Easter eggs. When you take that minifigure out of the back, normally there rests the night vision goggle headset, and then also in the front you can see a single spot for a cup that is resting somewhat on the dash. But now let's jump to the outside details of the Explorer. I think one of the best aspects of this vehicle is the fact that it has a three-point color grade between bright green, lime green, and yellow. Allowing for the colors to fade through three different levels like this definitely presented some design challenges for my brother, but I personally think it's one of the stronger features of this particular model. I don't know who was in charge of the original art direction of this movie, but having all this bright green contrast with red was a very interesting idea, and it's just one of those paint jobs that you simply won't forget or be able to mistake with anything else. Now in terms of building technique, there's 
there's also some interesting choices for the outside of the Explorer here. Some slope bricks are studded in on their side to allow a curve to kind of just come underneath the body of the cab. And I like how that inner curve also matches up with the wheel well pieces on top of that. The grill also looks particularly accurate with those minifigure hand pieces coming around to give you the insinuation of that looped bar. And the build for the rounded yellow bumper in the back is very subtle, but works to round out that shape of the Explorer just a little bit more. There's maybe one or two other aspects of this vehicle that I want to talk about later when I get into the handling section of the video, but let's jump on to the Jeep. It looks surprisingly like a Jeep from the front, in fact. The vertical grille and square headlights mounted in line with those wheel well pieces definitely work. And my brother and I both agree, but Lego's best new piece that they made in the last year or two is that one by two rounded plate with the open stud holes. That's what's used to attach both the front bumper and create the indication of those smaller orange lights that you actually have right underneath the square ones. And that color there comes from a couple of orange tooth pieces that are studded in on the other side. Functionally, the doors can open and close for this model, which is fun. And normally this model can seat two minifigures in the front with a third one loosely sitting in the back or standing in the back if you really wanted. Just like the Explorer, it's pretty fun to have figs posed in the vehicle, but when you take them out, you can more clearly see the uh, shifter that's in the front. There is that scene when Malcolm kicks the shifter and so it's just kind of a specific moment where your eye is drawn to that part of the vehicle and of course it sticks up like a sore thumb here. So at this much, much smaller scale, you can still see something that was from the movie on the inside. On the back we have a spare tire and there's also these interesting looped pieces that stick from the uh, back of the bumper. That was an interesting piece to use there. I hadn't noticed that on the Jeep until now that I'm looking at it. And it is simply just an oddly accurate detail to include. The top canopy is built from a variety of interesting connections, including flexi tubes in the back, more of those rounded one by two open plate studs, as well as the ever fun crowbar technique for the bars in the front by the windscreen. This is also a technique I haven't seen before where you take two of those window panels and when you mash them together, they fit perfectly into clips and that's what makes up the actual windshield itself. And outside of that, there is also some other fun techniques, but I can't possibly talk about every single little thing for either of these models, it is now time to get into the handling section of this video. As a general rule, I always like to say that these models are primarily meant for display. We don't follow the same structural integrity guidelines of LEGO because uh, we are more focused on getting cool and intricate, accurate, proportional details on smaller models like this. But you can see that they are easy to handle. They roll around. There is a little bit of functionality with the doors opening, for example, on the Jeep. But you can pick it up from just about every little extremity on this smaller model. Even the smaller bits by the roof can be picked up. And I say the only thing that you don't really want to pull on are maybe those crowbar pieces on the outside of the windscreen. You can turn this thing upside down. It looks pretty simple from the bottom, at least for the Jeep. It's actually very intricate when it comes to the Explorer. And with that, let's jump on over to this green, yellow, and red monstrosity. It is extremely strong to handle when moving it around. You can even hold it by the roof. And then, of course, I attempt to try to hold it by its weakest point to see if it'll work, and it does not. That grill piece cannot support the entire weight of the model big surprise. I try to put it back together one-handed for a second and then I realize that's not possible and it's not a difficult rebuild obviously it's just a tiny little uh, connection but it does take some time to just play around and bend all the little pieces back into place. So aside from the front being not necessarily delicate but something that you can uh, play around with and bend with constantly when you bump it uh, let's move on to the bottom of this vehicle. It definitely looks a lot more intricate. You'll see that some of those areas are not actually perfectly centered with some of those bricks. Trust me, it all makes sense and honestly it looks more intricate and complicated than it actually is to build. You can almost pick up the entire model by the clipped on foot panels. It does support the weight which is nice. And in general, I'll say the Ford Explorer is a little bit more intricate to construct, and it also takes more time getting the minifigures seated just right on the inside. At the end of the day, they're just about as playable as a regular set. The figs don't fit in quite as seamlessly or snugly like a Lego set, and there are one or two areas that are 
a little bit delicate, but nothing that is annoying to rebuild. So there you have it. That is the deep dive on the Jurassic Park inspired Ford Explorer and Jeep. For now, these are probably going to end up in our Jurassic Park collection area in the display case. That's probably a pretty good resting place for them right now. And remember, if you wanted to build these models for yourself, the instructions are at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have any ideas on another LEGO custom creation you'd like to see as a video or up in the web store, please let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault.